Good evening. Welcome to Around the World with Steve. Yay, Steve Wolfbrand to see you. Hello, everyone, he says. Hi, Steve. And tonight we are going to discuss, this is a, a really good article. It's a corporate greed, the fake, in quote, King David site, <laughs> illegal land grab. And we're going to be talking about the Save Silwan petition and also news about um, from the ICJ that they're set to hold a public hearing concerning the petition for an advisory opinion on the legal consequences resulting from Israel's policies and practices in the occupied Palestinian territories encompassing East Jerusalem. Hmm, that sounds like a fireworks display coming. Yeah. Um, well, and then also talking about the ICJ, South Africa is going to file. This is not directly related to the to the petition by any means, but um, South Africa is going to file an action against the United States and the UK mm -hmm. for being complicit in genocide. <clears throat> That's true. So how you doing, Joe? I am doing very well. Okay, I watched the Tucker Carlson uh, oh, yes. view of Putin last night and this morning. I watched it too. Okay, finished it. Boy, I thought Putin was terrific. Yeah, the bit the bit I watched. He's so, you know, it's so such a relief, isn't it, um, to hear somebody with some knowledge of history and some like broader vision about what's happening in the world. You can talk. You can talk about something other than the wars he's involved in. <laughs> um, I mean. The, Obviously, Putin is not is not um, you know his hand. He he's got some things to answer for also, but it's just a, so refreshing. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, uh, so refreshing to see such a deep thinker, okay, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and of authority and yeah, indeed. running a country. Indeed, um, right. um, um, but someone who can see the implications of what he does. Yes. Yeah, meanwhile, as Steve says, meanwhile, Biden. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's just, it's just, it's embarrassing. It's like, you look at the size of the USA, and this is the best the USA can do. Oh, that's, yeah, well, it's all about, I mean, you, got, you, you know better than I, because you've been at this for longer, the Dump the Corruption campaign. Um, mm -hmm. It's all sewn up. I mean, I've had I have had people say to me, the politics is all sewn up in the U.S. and I, you know, and it's taken me oh a good two or three election cycles now to get to the point where I agree. You know, it's because uh, when you when you have somebody propped up like Mr. Biden, and then you see you had sent around some article an article about all the money he's getting and from where he's getting it and from all these mega donor, yeah. uh, right. you know, pro-Israel lobby type people. It's like, oh, no wonder. I mean, he's got, he, he, it's sewn up. I mean, he's in their pocket. We're there in his pocket. I'm not sure which way, but I think it's he's in their pocket. Mm -hmm. um, so what, you know, and then you see Hillary Clinton, you know, you oh, see all, God. all these people, and then <laughs> and you wonder, you know, well, now I, I no longer wonder why they don't listen to anybody, you know, in the streets. They won't listen to anybody in the streets. It's clear as day. Yeah, Bonnie is here holding her head when <laughs> somebody mentioned Hillary Clinton. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... <laughs> enough is enough. Well, she, I don't, you know, I don't know where she, what she was, where she was speaking, but she was being harassed by somebody or somebody's, and she was just, you know, I saw it on her face. She didn't care. It just she didn't care. It, no, she's used to it. It's, I think she was at Columbia University, and she's used to it. Just, oh, okay. Just washed right over her, went right over her head. 
All right, but she's used to it. Let's she goes. Doesn't bother her anymore. No, it no. doesn't. Doesn't bother by Bi oh Biden was angry last night though. Boy was he angry. But I I don't know. I, I've been reluctant to say anything about the um, about his memory for a long time because I think you know I've thought that it was just one one more pot shot. There's a lot of stuff to say about him. Right. Negative negative to say about him for his position on policy. But um, I thought that the, the senility charge was was uh, it, it wasn't necessary, you know. But after what was said last night and looking at the way he deals with things, I'm closer and closer to believing it. Yes, I have to. I have to agree. Hmm. I am closer and closer to believing it. Also, of course. Okay, uh, uh, it's a dynamic thing. We've been hearing those charges uh, for a long time, you know, even before he was elected. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, whether they were true then or not, okay, it's, it's hard uh, uh, not to believe that he has a serious problem now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's after all, you know, three years later, four years later, and it's been getting progressively worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the word... Hmm. Go ahead, Joe, sorry. No, that's all right. Okay, and anybody can see it. Yes, yes. Now, the word I was searching for earlier was gratuitous. I thought, well, you know, let, let's, let's not pile on the man. We just stick to the issues, but... At this point, it seems, like you said, Joe, it seems very clear and obvious to the world. Yeah. And I've noticed him with other world leaders, and, and they mm -hmm. know there's something going on. It's obvious to everybody. But and the U.S. The U.S. can get away. Somehow the U.S. can get away with it. I don't know if, it, uh, if we're getting away with much anymore. Mm. Uh, um, I don't think there's much respect for us left okay, in Western mm. Asia anymore. Mm. Okay, and I, I think our prestige also is lower okay, in other parts of the world right. as well and has been slipping. I mean, if we examine now what's going on around the world and i'm just going to stick to latin america because that's where i am now you know it's La it's us and peru us and ecuador us and argentina us in um uh colombia now uh, there's a there's a threat of a coup in colombia um and petro is is having to fight defend himself very strongly very forcefully. Um, there were at least six, con oh, Cuba, Cuba also. So I think that's, that's either five or six Latin American countries where we can see the, you know, the intervention of the, oh, Honduras is the sixth. See, yes, you know, and uh, they're denying visas to state, to, the State Department is denying visas to officials within the Honduran government. Um, JOH is being tried now for having uh, been the dictator of a narco state. Um, there are increasing charges of narco trafficking in, in uh, Colombia. And these are all tied to the U.S. in one way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's, it's, you know, the prestige, the respect. These are all reasons for losing that, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have the um, information in the room. It's just mm -hmm. brief. We'll have to look into it more. But this just came out today from the International Court of Justice, Peace Palace, in The Hague, Netherlands. And it just says uh, it's a press release, 9 February 2024. And it says legal consequences arising from the policies and practices 
of Israel and occupied Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Request for advisory opinion. Public hearing to be held from Monday the 19th to the Monday the 26th of February 2024. The Hague on 9 February 2024, the International Court of Justice will hold public hearings on the request for an advisory opinion in respect of the legal consequences arising from the policies and practices of Jerusalem in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, from Monday 19 <coughs> to Monday 26, February 2024, at the Peace Palace in The Hague, the seat of the court. That would be the practices of Israel in the occupied yes. Palestinian yes. territory. And it says 52 states and three international organizations have expressed their intention to participate <laughs> in the oral proceedings before the court. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what, and do you happen to know, Joe, what a request for an advisory opinion means? Um, what the legal, you know, legal weight of such a hearing is? What? Because I don't have any idea. It's the first we've ever been in this position, at least that I've been aware of. Uh, yes, I don't think that if they come down, okay, it was an advisory opinion. Okay, I don't think that's near as significant as what they've already come down with. Yeah, and this is not a uh, follow-up hearing where states, countries are saying that Israel has failed to live up to the original ruling, is it? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. And I think we still have to see those actions. Okay. Yeah. The <laughs> I think they're coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think those will really be the significant ones in putting pressure okay, on the UN to do something. Because, yeah, from the, I mean, all of the talk, too, about the cutting off of aid to UNRWA, um, you know, just uh, immediately following the ruling. Everything yeah. that was in the ruling has been ignored. Everything. Okay, there was some talk today. I just uh, briefly saw this. I didn't have a chance to investigate it. But uh, supposedly Netanyahu has ordered, okay, the military to prepare to withdraw from Rafa. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wonder about the significance of that. Okay, specifically, he's ordered the IDF to prepare yeah to bring their forces home at this at the same time there are people in rafa who are terrified so oh yes i'm sure but the question but the what but the, qu the question is what is re which you know to to prepare for and to leave are two different things they're two so, different things uh okay but i have to wonder uh, uh, whether he's giving that order because there's been uh, some additional pressure from the United States. Um, I don't, I don't know because he basically, basically the other the one article I read said that you know before Blinken left yesterday, he basically said nya 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 nya, nya to Blinken. So, <coughs> so. Well, we'll see. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not ruling it out. It's just right because, like Joe heard that, and then I heard something also that he was asking for a report, uh, wanting the um, civilians in um, in Rafa to go to a pl for them to provide a place of safety while they wanted to get the rest of uh, Hamas. Yeah, that's Hamas. So he you wanted really to don't know with Netanyahu. Yeah, exactly. He wanted to evacuate everybody, everybody from Rafa. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so I would love to believe what you said, Joe. I don't know what to believe. That's no, thing. you don't. That's the problem. That's now, the I have problem. Here a tape. It says it's it's from Al Haq H A Q, bogus archaeology. Mm. 
Finding David, Bogus Archaeology, and Fake City of David. So it's yeah. only two minutes and 16 seconds. Too long. <laughs> Israel is archaeologically excavating the Palestinian village of Silwan in East Jerusalem, which they have called the City of David. It is managed by a right-wing NGO called Ilad, who strives to settle Israeli Jews in East Jerusalem under the narrative that the biblical city of David once stood there. Artifacts found at the site in Salwan date from many prehistoric and historical periods, but the unearthed artifacts are interpreted to support the claimed continuity of an Israeli state with a Jewish biblical past. Israeli archaeologist Mizrahi suggested that there has been no physical evidence that King David ever used the buildings of the so-called City of David, despite the site being one of the most studied in Israel. Bogus archaeology and the fiction of the City of David site is yet another political tool Israel uses to annex East Jerusalem. Israeli and foreign companies profit from this unlawful settlement by providing tours and travel packages to the site. Palestinian residents of Silwan are entirely absent from the story told to visitors, and tourist brochures omit the destruction of Palestinian artifacts or the forced removal of Palestinians from their lands. Thousands of tourists stroll through the illegal site, entrenching Israel's dispossession of Palestinian lands. Such a discourse violates Palestinians' collective right to self-determination and permanent sovereignty over their cultural, national heritage, and archaeological resources. Tourist companies such as TripAdvisor, Ben Harim Tourism Services, and Eged Hasim are directly and indirectly involved in the illegal Israeli settlement enterprise and risk contributing to the commission of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and apartheid. Mm. Yeah, I read somewhere too today that, you know, the, there's a debate, obviously a debate going on over the veracity of the claims about the uh, city of David. And there was something that I read just very much like what we've been hearing about Biden and his diagnosis of, you know, memory loss depending on what side of the political fence you're on, you believe it or you don't, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the article I saw said something about, um, yeah, it's a fake site only to those who aren't Israeli. And then, you know, all of the Israelis, it's not a fake site. It's, it's, you know, these, the, the lousy game of politics that that's been waged there for so in Israel and Palestine for so long. Right, and you got the money bundlers, the people that are behind the scenes that are funding the settlers and pushing the whole idea. I mean, they just want all the land. Some of these people are atheists. They just want all the land, so they connive different ways to get the land. No, I, I, I agree with that. And here Steve Wolfburn says, she... <laughs> The Bathsheba ride should be interesting. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> like I said, Steve, I, I, I have a friend who said it's you know there should be a statue in Bathsheba's honor, you know, because because David was no was no angel, no. No. <laughs> oh, the Bathsheba ride. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you gotta you gotta find some humor in all this, right? Yes, you do. Yeah, what an image. Do you want to read that article, Joe? <laughs> I think I got a kick out of the article, Joe. Uh, would you like me to read that? Sure, why not? Yeah, I've got to keep. I'm already talking too much. Okay, hang on just a sec. Uh, let me do something I was doing here. Oh. Okay, I'm okay now. Yeah, my voice is almost gone already. 
Okay. Um, AHAC launches new report. Um, where's the article, the though? Yeah, we, we put it in the, in the room. room? Oh, yeah. Do we have to put it in the room? I got it. Okay. Put He's got room. it. I got it up, yeah. So I'll put it in the room. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. So. Mm. Oh, this is all hot. the same organization that. Just that made, did that video. Yes, they're very active. I'm making the type larger so that uh, you know one can read it as one goes through. Let's see where is it? Yeah, Al Hot launches new report. Oh, it's from the same year. Finding David: Unlawful settlement tourism in Jerusalem, so-called quote city of David unquote, 16th of November 2022. Al Haq released its report on the quote city of David unquote and legal Israeli settlement and archaeological tourist site located in the Palestinian village of Silwan in annexed uh, Jerusalem unlawfully built on appropriated Palestinian land the fake quote city of David unquote was created upon the forced evictions of Palestinians Okay, and um, the demolition of Palestinian homes uh, using bogus uh, archaeology and also delegitimate uh, uh, excavations. The quote, City of David, unquote, advances a false uh, colonial narrative that the history of the site is mainly, if not only, Jewish. Uh, in an attempt to erase the site's ancient um, 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 Palestinian, Muslim, and other non-Jewish uh, um, 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 heritage. Okay, like perhaps it might even be Philistine heritage. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the report outlines the many violations of international law the settlement perpetuates and examines how private corporations not only sustain, but profit from the settlements of the oppression and erasure of the Palestinian people. Now, annexes to the report include an exchange of letters between Al Haq, mm. RIP advisor. <laughs> mm. uh, below are four short stories describing the main elements of the report. Um, um, funding and corruption the fake, quote, City of David, unquote, was built with funds transferred from secret <laughs> offshore accounts of companies owned by billionaire oil tycoon uh, uh, Roman Abramovich. He is the largest funder, okay, of ELAD, a colonial settler organization which manages the illegal, quote, City of David, unquote, site. Uh, he's also made significant donations to other Jewish causes. The vast hidden wealth of Russian oligarchs offers opportunities to undemocratically undem influence politics, where a few very wealthy people set their own political agenda. Before Russia invaded uh, Ukraine, Israeli politicians wrote to the U.S. ambassador, urging him not to add... Uh, 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 but, uh, but, uh, but Abramovich uh, to the list of sanctions. So, so Abramovich is Russian? Did, uh, uh, yes, evidently he's a Russian billionaire. It doesn't, does it say, it didn't say that at the very beginning, did it? Okay, or did I miss it? Uh, let's see exactly what it says. Billionaire oil tycoon. Okay, Roman Abramovich. That doesn't say. Uh, it doesn't say whether he's American, okay, or Russian. But but it, it's a sentence that goes on and says, Yes. Vast hidden wealth of Russian oligarchs. Yeah. So it implies that. It, he's yes. An oligarch. Definitely. Okay. But so, it didn't say directly. Okay. Didn't say so directly. All uh, right. But as other countries added Abramovich to their sanctions list of Russian oligarchs, yeah. ties to the Russian government and to President Putin, Israel wanted to protect him. 
these donations actively fund and advance the illegal, quote, city of David settler colonial enterprise. And the next section is bogus archaeology in the fake city of David. Um, excavations at the illegal, quote, city of David, unquote, site in the Palestinian village of Silwan pursue and focus exclusively on Jewish um, archaeological finds to bolster the claim the area once hosted the biblical, quote, city of David, uh, unquote. Artifacts found at the site date from many prehistoric and historical periods, but the fake, quote, city of David, unquote, tourist site uh, uh, deliberately hides the rich fabric of excavated Byzantine and Islamic uh, period buildings. Digs conducted between 2014 and 2015 revealed uh, major Byzantine discoveries, including a paved road of limestone slabs worn from use. Uh, just above the paved road lay a dirt road from the Islamic period with a stone drainage channel um, excavated inside. The 14th century hammam, which is a mm. bedroom, was also excavated at the site. It is one of the largest spaces uh, um, excavated in the Western Wall tunnels. Okay, a Mamluk structure that was uh, erected by the governor of Damascus, who was responsible for some of the most remarkable buildings of the period. Nothing informs the visitor of the historical significance of these discoveries. The visitors to the site are deceived into, are deceived into believing that little else of interest has been excavated at the quote city of David unquote site beyond Jewish first temple findings. Mm -hmm. The Hammam, for example, has been turned into an exhibition on Jewish answers. <laughs> For Palestinians, it is the right to know and understand their own culture that is being grossly violated, with all links to the historic context of Palestine being permanently erased. Mm -hmm. Destruction and misappropriation of Palestinian cultural property. Um, the archaeologists working under um, Elad's uh, auspices Irreversibly damage authentic artifacts uh, in an attempt at reshaping and rewriting history. An 11th century Muslim cemetery was dismantled at the illegal cult city of David unquote site. Several dozen skeletons, skulls, and bone fragments from the early Islamic period were removed without inspection, filling a hundred boxes which were stored and eventually buried. The destruction and misappropriation Palestinian cultural property is a hallmark of Israel's uh, settler colonial enterprise. The yes. uh, excavation methods are employed, which are much more invasive than other methods and damage the archaeological uh, 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 layers uh, residents of the indigenous Palestinian houses in the vicinity of the illegal city of David sites who cracks and fissures in the walls and floors of their homes. And the stability of the buildings is affected from the underground uh, excavation to entrench its unlawful annexation of Jerusalem. Israel conducts excavation after excavation in the city of David site to the detriment of the indigenous Palestinian population whose civil rights are infringed upon the grave violations of international law. Next, corporate greed and manipulating the tourist narrative. Those Israeli and foreign companies profit from the illegal city of David site from the money generated from thousands of tourists who visit the site under the false narrative that a biblical city once stood there. Tourist companies that are directly or indirectly involved in the uh, illegal Israeli settlement enterprise risk committing grave violations of international uh, humanitarian 
in human rights law, war crimes, and crimes against uh, humanity. May I interrupt just one moment? Um, this organization, ELAD, I just tried looking them up because I don't know who they are. It's a city. It's a and it's a city in Israel. It's called Elad. But do we know anything about this uh, about this organization, Elad? I don't think we know anything about the organization. But uh, what does it say about the population of the city? Okay, of of the city of Elad. It's um, the city in the central district of Israel. It was built for. Haredi Jew, for a Haredi Jewish population. Hold, hold on, let me let me look to find the population. Um, it was built, and to a lesser extent, extent, it was also built for a religious Zionist Jewish population, about sixteen miles east of Tel Aviv. Uh. It, it, it had a population of forty nine thousand. 593 in 2021. Elad ah, is the only locality in Israel officially designated a religious municipality. The name Elad or Elad, probably Elad, means forever God, but it is named, it is also named after a member of the tribe of Ephraim who lived in this area. And that's all she wrote. Hmm. Okay, um, very interesting. Founded in 1998. Um, so it's relative, obviously a relatively new. Um, founded in 1998. Yes. It has 49,500 people in it. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, yeah. 49,593. But I didn't find anything at all about the organization. And I was looking because if um, Abramovich is Russian, I wondered, you know, who else might be a part of the, of the organization and where else or what else they might have done to try to annex other, other cities or the other land. Um, in Israel, but I, I came up empty for now. Okay, but you found out, I think, a few significant things. Yes. Um, yes. Excavations in occupied territory okay, are uh, illegal. Mm. Israel, as an occupying power, mm. does not have the authority to allocate confiscated Palestinian land uh, for <laughs> excavation. Um, Makes sense. So archaeological digging of Palestinian land and the cultural property of the protected population at the illegal city of David site must stop. It constitutes illegal uh, annexation, but uh, 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 the land appropriation and the destruction of property. These are all crimes okay, under international law. Mm -hmm. Uh, find El Hack's report finding David, a lawful settlement of tourism in Jerusalem's so called city of David. Here, and there's a link. And then there's another link to find El Hack's uh, animation on the bogus uh, 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 archaeology uh, in Arabic here and in English below. And here, yeah, we just watched that, and we just watched that. Yes, so that's the article. Hmm. Hmm. Not very encouraging, yes, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's very clear in its perspective that whatever Israel is doing in this regard is illegal right um, and they're trying to create okay, a rationalization okay, in order to, to kick the palestinians out of their homes yes okay, in that area yes and we have the first one coming up well not the first one um the first one since we've been covering this in the last couple the last few days it's it's supposed to happen tomorrow um, 
to the home of Fakhri Abu Diab. It's supposed to happen tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm going to bring the petition up so we can go over okay. it again. He's been uh, fighting this for 20 years. Yeah, a good chunk of time. Um, but the whole community has been fight. The whole community has been fighting for longer. I think. Right, um, and it's terrible that they have to go through this. Well, and they yeah, and then the the Israelis say that you know the home there, the Palestinians' homes are illegal because they didn't acquire the proper permits. It's the same old tired song all over again. Mm -hmm. it's, and it is designed. Um, I mean, this, this, um, these mega donors, these billionaires, these people who have so much money to invest in what's going on in the country of Palestine slash Israel, um, it really sends shivers up and down my spine because these are the same people, some of the same people who are backing Joe Biden with hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and it, it makes me feel um, more and more like there is no a worry about where the, the room is for independent voices. Um, you know, and, and, and this, we got to keep doing what we're doing for sure. But, but, um, oh, we need 11 more signatures to reach 50. We can right. do it. We can do it. Right. Yes. And everybody could just keep sharing this out. And when it on Twitter with all the different hashtags to try to meet as many, you know, try to reach as many people as you possibly can. I, you know, I wonder if we'll have any video from tomorrow, you know, if there's going to, or if they're going to, there's going to be a stay, we're going to, you know, we'll probably have something that we can add tomorrow as an update to the petition. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that could spark more signatures. I mean, this is going to go on for a long time. It is. And I really hope they, well, they said they're addressing East Jerusalem. And what's been going on in East Jerusalem, and this is the the big issue with East Jerusalem, and you know Al Aqsa Mosque, and the, it, just watching um, the videos, you know you you see the terror, you see like just that short little skit that we watched, and you know there's soldiers everywhere, and you know people, and then having all these tourists come by these. People pay money and they go through the towns and everything, and and these are people's homes and just knocking down the homes just so these tourists can come by and you know it's it's just a fake land grab. Well, and it's did, and they hit the right community when you think about it, knowing going to this religious community that would all for it or would love to recreate something or create something even if it wasn't there. They just like the whole concept. <laughs> but like you said, the people with the money, they just want all the land. They don't care what's there, but what could, you know, they probably look at it, what could we do to get, you know, more land and creating something like this. And then they've got their groups of uh, settlers that go in there and wreak havoc. Yeah, it's just very, I, I, I don't like using the word creepy, but it feels creepy. It's like mm -hmm. something something not right, something terribly off. And, and you know, the words mission creep, you yeah. know, it's in certain wars and such. Well, you know, it starts out with one thing, but then it gradually creeps into something else and something else. This just gives me an overall uneasy and queasy feeling, you know, that that because not only because there are people who want to do this and are actively backing these projects, but there's so much money involved, so much money involved. What is that? I mean... Is that what the world is? I guess that's what the world is based upon. And just mm -hmm. going there and just killing people. 
and thinking it's okay to kill people. You know, the dehumanization where they think it's okay to do this. Yeah, they think they have justification in the story of a Malik. <laughs> and his story is not a very, not a very, uh, I mean, what are the lessons from his story? Is it, a, is it a positive story or is it, I mean, all I've heard is a negative. Uh, well, it doesn't seem like a positive story to me. It seems like, uh, you know, the ancient Israelis committed a genocide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem very positive to me. No. no, no. But I, <laughs> inspiration for the current Israelis, though. <laughs> yes, right. A terrible inspiration for the current Israelis. They committed a genocide, so we should, too. <laughs> We're ordered and, and, for God to commit a genocide. And then, you know, when you talk to other scholars, they say that, first of all, this is not, has nothing to do with God. You look at the, um, the the true Torah, you know, Jewish community saying mm -hmm. they're supposed to wait for God. They're not supposed to be doing something on their own. And that everything was supposed to transpire completely different. And that these Zionists are just pure evil. They're just, they, a lot of them are atheists to begin with. So it's just about getting land. It has nothing to do with with God at all. Oh, no, but the closer you are to getting that land, the closer to God you are. And to Don't me, it's like, a, it's like the calf. What was that? The uh, golden calf, you know? It's kind of like how many times people did wrong and they keep doing wrong. They don't want to sit and wait and trust what they're told to do. If they do believe in that, you know, they, they believe in something is supposed to have faith and they have no faith. Oh, yes, they do. I'm playing devil's advocate. Do you I know. know I know. They have faith in their Zionists and their Zionist leaders. Not no. Their, their, they have, uh, yeah, they have faith in those, and then they also have faith in their ragtag military. I mean, the the scenes of that, of that military, I was just, you know, dancing on people's graves. Well, and they, and they um, also follow the Talmud, which is, you know, when you look at that, that, that's just horrid. But that has nothing to do with God. Those are just, you know, rabbis and different people, their discussions, I guess, whatever. But it has nothing to do with the Torah. I mean, it's vicious, that Talmud thing. <laughs> that Talmud thing. I like the way you put that. <laughs> I once, no, uh, this not really relevant. So uh, I once one wondered if one could be a rabbi without believing in God, because, you know, it's like caring about a community and wanting to build a community has in some ways has nothing to do with a belief in God. But I mean, this is so, this is the opposite. This is it destroying is. a community. Right. This, this is, is pure Zionism. This is just pure Zionism. The same thing with Nazism, you know. It, these are just, these are just horribles. And anyway, I'll get into. I'll go. I'll read from the the petition. petition. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do a quick re do some quick research and see if there's any update on what's okay. gonna happen tomorrow. While okay. you read. Okay. Save Silwan, Palestine. Sanction Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem, Ariah King. And we have the picture here. It's the source is I R Amim in the Middle East I, and it shows in the purple the existing settler takeovers, and then the orange has imminent risk of eviction, and the pending eviction lawsuits in the green area. Why this petition matters, and this petition is to uh, President of the U.S. Joe Biden. <laughs> but he won't. Oh no! I, I, I I'm not going to throw the two of his joke out there. <laughs> right, but I, I've been sending it to the also to the ICJ, letting them know um, what's going yeah. on. 
why this petition matters, and it was started by Madeline Hoffman and the crew here. Urgent, <laughs> time sensitive, sign this petition now. Please, please, please sign it now. According to the February 3rd edition of Mondo Weiss, an article written by Ibrahim Husseini, residents of Silwan on the west bank of occupied Palestine are fighting to save their homes. Their 62-year-old leader, Bakri Abu Diab, has been served with an eviction notice. He and his other 11 family members have 10 days from the date of the notice, January 31st, 2024, to leave his home before it is demolished. And you could read the whole article if you'd like to. We have a link to it. And said, Fakri, this is what Mr. Fakri says, when the bulldozers come, they don't just demolish a home. They demolish my past, my future, our dreams, and our lives. The action of eviction is supported by the deputy mayor of Jerusalem, Araya King, Bezalel Smotridge, Minister of Finance, and self-identified fascist, Itamar ben Gavir, the Minister of Public Security, and the rest of the Messianic Zionists in the Netanyahu administration. Ben Gavir called for these demolitions to be carried out over Ramadan and urged Netanyahu not to acquiesce to uh, international pressure. The so-called leaders want to clear the neighborhood of Bustan and maybe other nearby neighborhoods in order to build an, in quote, archaeological theme park <laughs> <laughs> and King's Garden on the same spot where uh, supposedly the King David kingdom was. And uh, actually they're proven that the whole thing is fake. The theme park would be built on top of 1,500 homes owned by Palestinians. So this whole thing is just to acquire more land. The advocate for the Bustan residents, Ziad Kwar, said that this project is part of a larger plan that mm -hmm. leads to the destruction of the Alaska Mosque to build a, quote, Jewish Third Temple. This petition calls for the Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem, Araya King, Bezalel Smotrich, and Itamar ben Gavir to be sanctioned by President Biden under the recently issued executive order on imposing certain sanctions on persons undermining peace, security, and stability in the West Bank. And you can read the whole petition here. We have a link to it. And President Biden has already used this executive order to sanction illegal settlers on the West Bank. Bakri Abu Diab has until February 10th to stop Israel from evicting him and his family from the home he has been fighting for since 2012. And probably longer. We just couldn't find uh, right. We couldn't find the real date. Yeah, so that he's was, helping a lot of people. He's been helping yeah. the community. Yeah. And we have hashtag end the occupation, hashtag save Silwan, hashtag sanction Israel, hashtag West Bank under attack, hashtag send stop home demolitions, hashtag save Alaska mosque, hashtag stop ethnic cleansing, hashtag stop the genocide, hashtag ceasefire now, and hashtag free Palestine. Please, please, please sign this petition if you haven't signed it already and please share it around we really need to get this um get more signatures on this yeah <laughs> and if you are familiar with uh the city or the town of sheik Jarrah, you know this is in the same vein as the efforts to to save sheik Jarrah, um another town that you know where um israeli settlers are trying to clear the clear the area of people who've lived there for quite some time, for many for, for decades. And I'm looking here, and unfortunately, you know, I for a minute there, I thought well, I found something because it said Israel, the Israelis uh, postponed the demolition, but that was an article from 2022. Um, so there's nothing that I see yet. Um, 
that um, that is postponing what's going is going to postpone what's supposed to happen tomorrow. Oh, but we're all over it. We have there's a peti our petition is listed on Google here. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and these these articles are going back to 2021. Um, so I don't, I'm f not yet. There's nothing yet um, that's postponing the demolition or um, or the eviction. But I'm sure uh, we should all look. We should all stay. You know, stay vigilant tomorrow and see if something happens tomorrow. We should, we should, we'll, we'll take whatever signatures we've got. Um, and oh, yeah, and you can tomorrow also. You can call the um, White House comment line at 202 456 1111. 201 45. What did I say? Four five six. No, what did I say? I thought I yeah four five six. Okay. Um, eleven eleven. Um, and um, that go. You could leave a comment immediately, or we had the White House site up yesterday or the day before. Whitehouse.gov. Like yeah. Where and this this might be the most effective thing, right. um, is to go to their contact us page for the white house and fill in the online form um it's www.whitehouse.gov slash contact um and i i have no idea how many people might have done that i think i'm going to get up in the morning and do it myself um you know and then we can later on deliver those signatures we've got to the white, maybe maybe submit the, because we can we can submit the list um, or the list of names um, to the White House. Um, when people have been fighting against these demolitions for a very long time. Yes, they have. And you know we've recently added our voice to this, but. Um, I think it's really important for us to keep it going and to keep the petition going even after tomorrow because if it's um yeah it's, oh this is the executive Joe, order you've got, imposing certain sanctions on persons undermining stability okay. this is the way steve wolfrand says your assessment of the putin interview is spot on Oh, yes, I see. Yes. But thank you, Steve. Oh, and here's Brandy. I didn't see you come in, Brandy. How I'm glad to see you. You must be feeling a little better anyway. Um, yeah, so what do you do? You have the contact page up? Is that what yeah, you have? The con yeah, I have the contact page up. Yeah, contact us. Um, I think it's worth doing it, and anyone who signed the petition can do this. Maybe what we should do, D, is um, I can update the petition to include this information. Okay. Um, and then I can do it when we're finished. And then people can, who are signing it tomorrow on the last, uh, can also send a comment uh, to the White House. Um, because this is just, I mean, when have the Israeli settlers told the truth? Never. Have they ever told the truth? No. Has, has uh, I, have no I have no idea. <laughs> has Netanyahu ever told the truth? Uh, he has never told the truth. Um, you know, that's if he says we, things, but, you know, it, it, it's... Nah, he's yeah, like he's the proven, he's proven. Yeah, the he's broken, broken clock, yeah. It's right twice a day, even a broken clock. Is right. 
thing is. Has he been right twice? <laughs> I don't know. He's not as good as a broken clock. Exactly. I think it's being generous to him. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm also looking to see if there's any updates on Rafa. Um, because speaking of telling the truth, huh? It depends on who he's talking to. You know, you hear him talking to certain Israelis. He says one thing, then another group of Israelis will say something different. And then, you know, different political people. He says another thing. You know, he just, whoever he's talking to, he's, he's got something different to say. Yeah, because right here it says uh, from the story five, five hours ago, um, Israel announces an invasion, an imminent invasion of Rafa where more than 1.5 million Palestinians are now, they're living, but that doesn't mean they're living in houses. Um, and seven hours ago, he ordered a plan to uh, evacuate Rafa. But I mean, this th these are five and seven hours ago, Joe, you might've seen something more recent. Well, the yeah, U.S. has said they don't want to be part of anything with Rafa, you know. With well, they are, but they are. They are, because they, they send bombs over. Yeah, I mean, the, the U.S., you know, this is this is when good friends, you know, pretend that they disagree. <laughs> are you looking at all the money donors, too? Yeah, well, that's... that's um, Yeah, and you know, if 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 he if they're disobeying, quote unquote, disobeying the U.S., um, you know, it's if it's in name only, right? It's only in name because the U.S. has the as we've said so many times, the U.S. has the ultimate hammer, and the U.S. isn't using it. You know, if the U.S. really wanted to stop this. They'd withhold the money. Right. And this is where it comes to complicity. You got complicity. that right. As and there's a very, a very serious case for complicity. Yeah. And the more oh, we yeah. continue to support this. Yes. Uh, following a decision of the ICJ, uh, the more complicit we look. Absolutely. I mean, the world, the world is aghast, really, that well, not all the world. There's like 10 countries that support the uh, Israel and the U.S. all told. I mean, so there's 10 countries in, in withholding funding from UNRWA. But then there are other countries that have increased their funding. Um, because, you know, that's just, it's, it's appalling what they did. And for the reason that they withheld the money is, makes it even more appalling. The people of Gaza need food. Right. People of, and uh, you can't, what is it, that weaponize the provision of food. Now, Joe, I read today that um, that the residents of the Warsaw Ghetto were starved. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I believe they were. So, I mean, Israel's using tactics that were used against against it yes and they know it too yeah they do and they're they not still, and they still use the tactics this is what i mean by the creepy feeling it is how, disgusting how does anyone do this anyone and let alone someone who a group of people who've lived through the same things themselves yeah, I don't see anything. Oh, 39 minutes ago. It's still saying death. Uh, it says death toll nears 28,000 as Rafa assault looms. Alarm raised over dangers to more than 1 million civilians trapped in Rafa as Israeli ground invasion looms. So it's not been called off yet. He's evacuated, he's ordered the evacuation 
of civilians. But who knows? Who knows, Joe? I mean, an eleventh hour, like an an eleventh hour stay of execution. They they often come in. You know, and we've been lied to so much, they don't know what to believe. All right, yeah, here's this. This is right that you said. The U.S. says it will not back unplanned Rafa offensive. Okay, so take your money away. Exactly. Send Netanyahu into the corner with, you know, the dunce cap on. Isolate him. Take the money away. Punish him. Exactly. They're not going to do anything like that. They're just going to talk. Mm-hmm. Okay, does anybody else have anything else you want to say tonight? No, not uh, tonight. But I'm sure there'll be a lot to say tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes, yes, yeah. tomorrow there will be. Yeah. So, all right. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Thank you. It's good to see Brandy and that Brandy's feeling better. Thank you, Steve. And Steve Wolf, yeah, Brandy. Thank you, Steve. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in when when we end this uh, this program. I'm gonna go in and add the the phone number to the White House comment line and the link to the White House uh, con um, email email page. Okay, Contact us by email. So yeah. So in our last push, we can do all those things. That Sign the petition. Great. Send an email and make a phone call. Our yeah. last, our last push before um, Fakhri's home is supposed to be demolished, or he's supposed to be evicted. Right, and they're seven hours ahead of time, so we'll. Mm. Yeah, so I'll, you know, as soon as, as soon as everything gets up, I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing, and in the comments on my um, shows, you know, stuff that's on my timeline, different stuff I put in the comments section, the petition. So okay. you know, I try to get the petition to as many places as I can. And I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. And thank you, Joe. Thank you, Madeline. I always love having you here. And thank and thank you, D. And thank Please you, hit, D. Hit Our fearless. Like button, subscribe and share, share, share. And buy D a coffee. <laughs> you got we gotta we gotta keep D awake. <laughs> My Palestinian coffee. Yes. The Palestinian coffee house. They, you know, with every purchase, they, you know, donate money over to Palestine. So, you know, it goes to a good cause. And uh, Madeline, she gets her coffee from. Kafia masks. I'm still tracking my Palestinian, my box of Palestinian goodies. Um, including coffee, including olive oil. Oh my goodness! That there was a story that was posted, or I saw today, a story about all the the eight hundred thousand olive trees that the Israeli occupation has destroyed. That's horrific. They yeah. have no respect. No respect for the land. Yeah. You know, but but then I saw on the other on the flip side of it, I saw the resilience. The, the video talked about the resilience of the Palestinian people, and they've replanted hundreds of olive trees. But it takes it takes time. It takes time for the fruit to be, or the the olives to be to grow. But anyway, yeah, olive oil. A very, very much a lifeline for many Palestinians. Yeah, the Alard is like from the West Brent Bank, Alard olive oil. Yeah, you and you can get it from, you can get it from Kafia masks, or you can go to Murad Amro, M U R A D, capital A M R O. You can go to his Facebook page, and I think he says, you know, send him a private message, and he'll send you. He'll tell you how to how to obtain the, the 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 products, the olive oil and other things he's selling. And the thing that gets me is that those olive trees that they're ripping down, some of them, you know, thousands of years old. Five th four thousand the one. Yeah, and disrespect for the man, disrespect. That's awful. Well and and as I learned long time not that well, ten years ago I learned it. I guess that's a long time ago now. 
um, the all uh, and you know the test the the proof is that some of these olive trees are three thousand four hundred four thousand five thousand years old. Oh my god! They're very very strong, and the person that I learned about this from is a Tunisian man, and we were driving through hectare after hectare of olive trees, and he said he has like a kind of a landscape built business. And olive trees are so strong that they, even if you transplant them, they usually survive. And so there's absolutely no reason for the Israelis to be destroying these olive trees. Um, if they don't like them where they are, they can move them. I mean, I, I still wouldn't support that because it's this totally disrespectful of the Palestinians' need to make a living and their deep connection to those trees. But the trees, they, they should never, they shouldn't be bulldozed. They can last for centuries. Right, so if they really cared about the land and the history, they would care about the trees. They don't, they don't. There is no love for that land by them. And the Palestinian people, they love that land it preserves the olive trees and everything in that region is important to them. Mm -hmm. so there's that love of the land. Well, that deep, the deeply held con connection to the land. And, you know, I can see that here in Colombia with campesinos. Um, you know, and it's all around the world where there are campesinos. It's a, it's a way of life that's disappearing, unfortunately because big business comes in, and big business, multinational corporations, agribusiness corporations. They want, you know, they want to mechanize, automate everything. They want monocultural stuff. They want avocado has, they want, you know, they, their products, their, yes, their products of choice and to heck with what Campesinos have been doing for years and years and years with the land. You know, and I've even had some people argue with me that the campesinos, if they say don't spray something on our land because um, it, it's not it's not helpful and it and it um, poisons what's being grown. I've had people argue with me that campesinos. Campesinos, it's all anecdotal. Whatever the campesino knows, it's anecdotal. When if our scientists say that it's not a problem, then we have to listen to our scientists. Mm -hmm. I said, That's no. Crazy. Who's the expert? The scientist who does something in the lab or the person who's worked the land for years? Exactly. Okay. And they pay off people too. They pay off scientists and stuff like that. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember. It's 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 a um, a Monsanto product that that's very controversial. And right now, I'm not remembering the name of it. Can, can either of you remember? Um, that's been implicated in a lot of um, well, they sickness spray and illness. Yeah, yeah they, they spray it on the lawns and stuff like that. And they spray it on the trees. They spray yes. it. And it, it oh God, why can't I remember it? Right, they spray it on the farms, and it's getting people sick as it gets into the products. And then you can't replant the seeds. Monsanto seeds are not like regular mm -hmm. seeds. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, and and it, it it travels from one, um, it travels from one farm to the next. Right. So I'm I'm gonna look while you while you. Because uh -huh. I, I can't believe I don't remember the name of the product. Because I remember, too, reading with India when they were talking about yes. it. Was corporations came over with that. And what they end up doing is destroying the farms because the farmers, you know, they save the seeds for the next season. But with this, it's, you have to purchase seeds from Monsanto because their seeds are shit. They don't, yeah. uh, you can't, you know, the, what's done is done from season to season. And plus, and you have to, yeah, there's just a lot of dangers with it and with the soil and everything else. What the heck is the name of that? Um, 
and all around the world people have been fighting against it. Um, Roundup, Roundup. Yeah, Roundup, okay. There it is. <laughs> Sheesh, I can't believe. I guess there's too much Spanish in my head. It's blocking some stuff like that. No, but, you know, Roundup. And, and if... If somebody, if a campesino in Colombia wants to grow, or doesn't want to grow, agrees to grow avocado haas, they have to use Roundup to control, you know, as an as a as an herbicide. Um, right, and so they're destroying, they're destroying the land. Was what they're doing. Yeah, and I'm I'm bringing this up because you know the land in Gaza has been destroyed. A lot of the agricultural land in Gaza has been destroyed. You know, the the olive trees on the West Bank have been have been cut down. You know, interfering with the Palestinians' relationship and deep connection with the land. Um, you and know, also, it's alarming. It's alarming. And it's hypocritical when you look at this, wanting to uh, create something. First of all, that they said it's fake. The fake, uh, you know, King David uh, archaeological site and have all these tourists come and blah, 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 create something that's fake. Meanwhile, you have real history there, the olive trees that go back thousands and thousands of years. Good point. Good point. Anyway, we took a little digression. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but it, it, it's a good point because when you have true history and real history and them bringing some fake stuff in there that's harmful to people and the community. This is true. And the farmers are suffering big time from this, from the Monsanto and everything. And here you have with the olive, the olive um, you know, business. Yeah, we were talking. No respect. no respect for the land. No, and that's why it's important to buy the products. Yes, it is. On that note, I guess we'll be <laughs> back tomorrow evening. All right. And I want to thank both you and Joe again. I really love having you here, and I really love our conversations. Okay, I will be back tomorrow evening if you have a show then. Yes, okay. until nine nine o'clock. We'll do it at nine o'clock again. Okay. All Appreciate right. You. <laughs> I hope we do, and I'm going to go in right now and edit that the petition. Okay. Well, thank okay. you, everybody, again. We'll Welcome. see you tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Good night, everyone.